I gotta tell the truth. As I was watching Raw Monday night, the end of the show, I was crying laughing. Just in absolute hysterics. Not because anything was really truly funny. It was more kind of the sad, pathetic, train wreck type of hilarious. And believe me, once Shane McMahon said that word under siege and the crew of mostly SmackDown jobbers went after the raw locker room of mostly SmackDown jobbers, I completely and totally lost it and continued to lose it. And still I'm trying to fight against it now just at the thought of it. Because yes, these invasion angles go so well for WWE, right? Now let me get this straight, just from a logic standpoint. AJ leaves the SmackDown tour to take a big long flight to come to the Raw pay-per-view, wrestle at the Raw pay-per-view, lose at the Raw pay-per-view, so that way the next night he can be a part of some invasion and now SmackDown is pissed at Raw. <laughs> and, and the way the WWE and Vince specifically were trying to sell this under siege catchphrase, it's like it's going to be Survivor Series 2017. It's really bragging rights, but it's not. Hashtag under siege. You'd have thought, Jesus Christ, that they had invested WWE Studios into another under siege project by Steven Seagal. Under Siege 8. Creepy weird looking guy helps Flatty get his kickbacks back. That's what it looked like. <laughs> it was striking to me as I'm watching this segment. And... You see who's invading from SmackDown and who's getting attacked by Raw on Raw, and you say, oh my God, that's how bad this roster is. Oh my God, that's how bad this product is. And I don't think I was alone at thinking that that segment was completely and totally stupid. It didn't seem like the crowd there was all really that into it, and a lot of the people on social media, for whatever that means, that doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot, but just based off of what I saw, a lot of people thought it was hot trash. And some of the ones that didn't were some of the wrestling journalists that you're wondering if and for how much they're on the WWE's payroll. I mean, this was just bad. <laughs> so bad, though, that it was absolutely hilarious. And you know what? Whether you like it or not, I could give a crap less. You enjoy the crap your way. I'll find my excuses to enjoy it the way that I do. My approach might be different, but if we ultimately both enjoyed it in our way, isn't that all that matters? So shut up about it. I enjoy train wrecks as much as really good quality stuff. And frankly, don't pretend like that's a unique phenomenon just to me or a small segment of people because train wrecks, epic fails and such, are the most popular things that you see on the internet. So this is a pretty consistent thing. It was so bad though. Like they're going and finding this person, and then they're going to find in that person, and then for some reason Seth Rollins is up <laughs> about ten feet up and dropping down, and then the Shield's getting their ass whooped, and Kurt Angle's acting like a scared little puppy dog, and even just the way this was executed from the very beginning, SmackDown comes down through the crowd. We don't even find out who's going to be working for Raw at Survivor Series, and Shane comes in, and all of a sudden he's supposed to be like this militant heel and saying. Under siege. And then they just go and it's just... It was bad. I'm sorry. Typically, I'm not a fan of the invasion angles, especially when the WWE does invasion angles because, again, those usually don't turn out well. But with all of that being said, I have absolutely no problem with this company doing Raw versus SmackDown at Survivor Series. Because why not? What does the company have to lose except more audience members? What does the company have right now in terms of stories on either show that is so incredibly interesting or compelling that you don't want to risk interrupting the momentum of them or the flow of them? And the answer is absolutely nothing. Now, based off of what we saw Monday night on Raw, what happened at TLC made a lot of sense because you really didn't set up to much of anything because you weren't trying to set up to much of anything because you were clearing the slate to go for Raw versus SmackDown at Survivor Series. So while TLC still sucked to me, at least now it makes some logical sense in terms of the approach of the show. You weren't really trying to advance a lot of things. You were trying to cut things off, do a bunch of one-offs because you knew you were killing time to get to Survivor Series. 
and what you were going to do here. And now don't get me wrong, the whole concept of Brock Lesnar and Jinder Mahal being some type of big featured money match is absolutely hilarious and borderline disgusting, but even with that said, you could potentially salvage that a little bit by having a Samoa Joe interfere and cost Brock Lesnar the match, or Roman Reigns come back and cost Brock Lesnar the match. You can have freaking Jinder go over here. Yeah, he looks stupid, but he looks stupid anyway, so what the hell is the difference? But it's one of these things that when you think about Survivor Series, there are different ways you could go. I Me mean, personally, I would rather see a War Games match or I would see, rather see the Elimination Chamber come back to Survivor Series. It feels like those are natural homes for these shows. But if you want to sit there and do something where you have two unique and mostly separate brands, why wouldn't you bring them together for one night to do this type of one-off concept? I know it used to be called bragging rights, but it's Survivor Series now. And in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter that much. Because again, there's nothing really that interesting on Raw that you're really risking and interrupting here. There's nothing really on SmackDown that's all that interesting or compelling that you risk screwing the pooch on by interrupting the momentum and flow of the story here. It's just a bunch of random crap. So even if there is no real reason at this point for Raw and SmackDown to wrestle other than one team's red and one team's blue and let's go at it, why not? It makes as much sense as anything else in the WWE right now. And in terms of giving us some fresher matchups, it will actually give us some fresher matchups. It will give us a break for some of the other crap. And it's one of those nights you can go into it having that one night, having no real expectations about stories or this and that. And you can actually just focus on the matches itself. Can make it easier to enjoy one of those types of shows because it's literally truly just about the execution of the performers and the execution of the company within that singular night. Does it make a lot of logical sense at this point why you would have Raw and SmackDown fight? Not necessarily, other than well, again, one's red, one's blue, one's Monday night, one's Tuesday night. Why are they fighting? What's at stake? Who knows? And frankly, who freaking cares? Because when it comes to how everything else is booked in the WWE, why do we do most of the crap that we do anyways? Most everything is one gigantic circle jerk of a waste of time any damn ways. So why not just go completely random for one night? Why not? It's not like it's going to move the needle one way or another, and it's not like doing it traditionally where you'd have some Raw versus Raw matches and SmackDown versus SmackDown matches is going to move the needle either. In the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't freaking matter. And it feels like at this point in time, this company is just trying to coast and get by because they're not really sure what's going on right now. They're not really sure what they have right now to where they're kind of waiting until 2018 to maybe try to kick it up in a little bit once you get into Royal Rumble season. And honestly, it's not like the company treats Survivor Series as nearly of important show as many fans like myself have treated it over the years. It's been a secondary Big Four pay-per-view for a long, long time. And I know they're going to do the four hours crap and all of this and all of that, and that's bad in and of itself, but shit. Who cares at this point? I think that's the fundamental thing that it comes down to is, now of course I'm always the negative one, and of course I'm just bitching a bitch. Mm, kind of true. But it really doesn't matter. That's the whole point. It really doesn't matter. If he did it a different way, there's no guarantee it's going to be any damn good. Frankly, some of y'all loved AJ and Finn, and that was a randomly thrown together match, so why not have a show of randomly thrown together crap at this point? Again, give us something different, something interesting. I know there's going to be complaints about heel champions taking on heel champions. It's not much different than face champions taking on face champions, and frankly, at this point in time, who gives a shit? Because with a lot of those champions, it's not like the WWE's doing great things with them anyways. With the 50-50 booking and the hot potatoing of the titles, who cares? And when you look at this company right now and you look at the two world champions that you have, they're boring as piss anyways. So having them in their own individual matches is no guarantee of success. So why not take that suck and roll it all up into one and minimize it and you might actually make something more positive out of it. So yeah, Raw vs. SmackDown, Survivor Series. Not really a reason, other than what I've already mentioned. Does it really need one? It doesn't really matter. 
Because frankly, most everything else the WWE does from their product standpoint doesn't matter anyway. So what the hell is the difference? Shake it up. Try something different. And I look at it this way. If it's a good show, then I'm pleasantly surprised. I will have enjoyed the night. If it is a terrible show, then it gives me something to rant and rage about on here. So either way, it's a win-win-win. Just freaking do it for the Schleg Daddy type of situation here. On one condition. God needs to twerk. That will make Survivor Series history.